Hey everyone, welcome to this psychology lecture series. In this video, we are going to talk about another important characteristic of test standardization which is validity. The concept of validity was formulated by Kelly who stated that a test is valid if it measures what it claims to measure. For example, a test of intelligence should measure intelligence and not something else such as memory. The major difference between reliability and validity is that validity tells us how good a test is for a particular situation. Reliability tells us how trustworthy a score on that test will be. We cannot draw proper conclusions from a test score unless we are sure that they are reliable. Even when a test is reliable, it may not be valid. So we should ensure that any test we select is both reliable and valid. There are different types of validity. Let us discuss some. Internal validity refers to whether the effects observed in a study are due to manipulation of the independent variable and not some other factor. In other words, there is a casual relationship between the independent and dependent variable. External validity refers to the extent to which the results of a study can be generalized to other settings, other people and over time. It can be improved by setting tests in more natural way and using random sampling to select participants. We may assess the validity of a test in the following ways. Content validity is the extent to which the items on a test are representative of the construct the test measures. If a midterm exam that is intended to assist your understanding of the material covered during the first half of the course contains a representative sample of the material covered during the first half of the course, the exam demonstrates evidence of content validity. There are generally two components of content validity. Face validity is one of the most basic measures of validity. Essentially, researchers are simply taking the validity of a test at face value by looking at whether a test appears to measure the target variable. For example, on a measure of happiness, the test would be said to have face validity if it appeared to actually measure levels of happiness. While computing face validity, we should take the precaution to select suitable people to rate a test such as a questionnaire, an interview or an IQ test. For instance, individuals who actually take the test would be placed to judge its face validity. In fact, face validity is whether a test seems to measure what it is supposed to measure. Construct validity was invented by Cornwall and Michel in 1955. Construct validity refers to the extent to which a test captures a specific theoretical construct or triad. To test for construct validity, it must be demonstrated that the phenomenon being measured actually exists. For example, the construct validity of a test for intelligence is dependent on a model or theory of intelligence. Another major type of validity is the criterion related validity. It is a validation method that is used to determine whether a test predicts what it claims to predict. A test has evidence of criterion related validity when it demonstrates that its scores are systematically related to a relevant criterion. The two major components of criterion related validity are the concurrent validity and the predictive validity. Concurrent validity is the degree to which a test corresponds to an external criterion that is known concurrently that is occurring at the same time. For instance, a new IQ test or personality test might be compared with an older but similar test known to have good validity. Predictive validity is the degree to which a test accurately predicts a criterion that will occur in the future. For instance, a prediction may be made on the basis of a new intelligence test that high scorers who are 12 years old will be more likely to obtain university degrees several years later. If the prediction is borne out ultimately, then the test has good predictive validity. Hope you like this video and please subscribe. Thank you.